On the morning of December 5th, 1952, the people of London woke up to their typical foggy city. The weather that day, though, was unusually cold, and there was practically no wind. Unbeknownst to the citizens at the time, though, this wasn't their normal fog, and it wouldn't leave until Tuesday, December 9th, four days later. Sitting above the city was something called an anticyclone, which is a weather event that causes a particular area to be overly calm, caused by cyclical winds around that area, trapping the centered air inside. Londoners already used to their foggy city first went about their days as normal, but when the fog didn't go away and started to feel more and more toxic, Londoners knew something was wrong. Massive smog events like this were known in London as pea supers because of how thick and slow flowing they made the air. This event, though, in December of 1952, was much worse than previous events and would become known as the Great Smog of London. Roughly 4 to 12,000 people would die over the next four days, many from respiratory issues and many from actually falling into the River Thames and drowning. While this may sound absurd, the smog over these four days was so thick that people couldn't even see their own feet, causing many to fall into the river accidentally while just trying to get across town. But why did the Great Smog happen? The exact cause wasn't actually concretely known until recently. London has suffered from poor air quality ever since it began industrializing in the 13th century. The heavily populated city with its cool, humid climate was, and is, the perfect creator of dense fog and smog. But on the days before the Great Smog, there was a particularly cold weather front moving in, causing Londoners to burn more coal to heat their homes creating more smoke. During the Great Smog, it's estimated that each day, 1,000 tons of smoke particles, 140 tons of hydrochloric acid, 14 tons of fluorine compounds, 370 tons of sulfur dioxide, and 800 tons of sulfuric acid were emitted from chimneys in the city from the burning of coal to keep houses warm. This was a deadly cocktail that normally would be swept away by winds. But there was an anti-cyclone over the city, preventing the movement of air throughout. The fog in London was also incredibly dense, with the water droplets being large enough to facilitate intense sulfate reactions, causing the fog itself to become highly acidic. The Great Smog practically shut down the city. Public transport was stopped, ambulance services stopped, concert and film screenings were canceled, everything stopped. Because of the fog, it was initially estimated that 4,000 people had died, but this was later raised to 6,000 and 25,000 more people had gotten sick because of it. Mortality in London was raised for months after the fog. People died of influenza, respiratory tract infections, hypoxia, or they drowned in their own pus that arose from lung infections. Modern researchers today, though, in studying the event, now place the death count over 12,000. Modern researchers are also why we know the fog became highly acidic and examined the exact chemical processes that caused the fog to occur back in 1952. The Great Smog of 1952 also caused the creation of the Clean Air Acts of 1956 and eventually 1968, leading ultimately to the reduction of air pollution in the United Kingdom.